Hey everybody, welcome back to our webinar series. <laughs> Today we are talking to Brooke Hess again and she is going to be discussing how to loop and if you're already looping how to go bigger on them. Um, today's presentation is brought to you by California Water Sport Collective. My name is Melissa DeMarie. I'm the host of the show and chief instigator of Cali Collective. Um, most of you already know, but Cali Collective is a community building organization where we do things like kayaking and more kayaking. And then we do yoga and camping and all sorts of fun stuff. So um, before I go off on a tangent, I'm going to introduce to you Brooke and then um, maybe Brooke for a couple of people that haven't met you before. You can just give them a quick rundown on your uh, on your boating life. And I'm going to unmute you. That's going to happen right now. Right now. Okay, I know. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my boating life, I guess I um, started kayaking when I was like 12 or 13, grew up in Missoula, Montana. We have like a really sweet whitewater wave in town, Brennan's Wave, and learned to loop when I was like 16 or 17 or something like that. And yeah, I made the US team for freestyle when I was 24. And I've just been, I've been teaching kayaking for like nine years now, I think. Um, yeah, can you guys all see me? My internet's not very good, I don't think. Is it working? I hope so. Okay, I'm just gonna keep talking. I think it's working. Um, it's a little jumpy. Let me move somewhere else. Let's see if I can find a better spot. There's some sluggishness. Okay, thank you. Let me move upstairs. This is the fun part of being kayakers trying to do an online business is that and that's the one thing you don't have to worry about things being overly produced and too glossy for you. We're just we're just kayakers <laughs> trying to hang out with our friends and our students. So uh, cool. Good out. There you go. Okay, is that better? Yeah. I think it's better. You're moving now. Okay, sweet. Okay. Yeah. So I've been teaching kayaking for like nine years. Kayaking for like fourteen. Competing for I don't know, long time um but yeah um anyways the loop is my i think it's my favorite trick to do um and i've been doing it the longest and i think in my opinion the loop is the easiest trick to learn after the spin first the spin and then the loop a lot of people say the cartwheel is easier but they are wrong i think the cartwheel is much harder because you have to do two different body rotation movements, whereas the loop is just sort of one, once you get it down, it's like one fluid motion. Um, yeah, so what is a loop? A loop is a front flip in a kayak, and it's basically the prerequisite for most other freestyle kayaking tricks as well. So you need to know how to loop to learn how to space Godzilla, which is a loop with a 90 degree twist. You need to know how to loop to do a McNasty, which is a 180 degree spin into a loop. And a phonics monkey is a cross bow pirouette into a loop. And then like a macho move is a down river, it's a down river move, a down river wave wheel into a loop off the crest of the wave. Um, and then there's also like the, you can also like loop off waterfalls, which is something that I don't do because I think that's scary. Um, so here, let me see if I can screen share here. Um, here's a video of ways, oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Melissa, can you let me screen share, please? Let's see. Hmm. There we go, got it. Okay, screen sharing. There we go. Here's some loops. 
Some ways you can throw loops, you can throw loops in a play boat, in a creek boat. That's on the Kaituna River in New Zealand. That's really fun. You can throw loops in flat water, which a lot of you guys said you are working on right now. On a wave, instead of a wave versus a hole. You can throw loops in Idaho, which is like the most beautiful place to throw loops. And then downriver freestyle loops, also known as macho moves. And then clean loops are when you don't use your paddle to finish the loop. You just land straight like that. All right. Cool. You didn't see the video. Hmm. Let me see if I can redo this. Screen share. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Maybe this one. How does this work? Did that work? Can you guys, did you see that one? Um, drop the link. It's, not it's a, link. a little it's, bit choppy. Do you have, can you just throw the link into the chat box? No, it's a clip. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Dang. Sorry, guys. I was hoping that would work. Yeah. I think it's your bandwidth. Dang, I even moved. Well, yeah, bummer. I'll load them to YouTube later and then you guys can watch them later. <laughs> How does that work? No worries. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay, so anyways, moving on, that was just a video of some awesome loops um, that were super fun to do. So, okay, moving on, we will start talking about how to do the loop. Um, so some prerequis prerequisites for throwing loops are you need to be able to spin both ways on a wave or in a hole. So I see a lot of people starting to learn how to loop or they have the goal of learning how to loop without actually having full control or awareness in the hole, just like side surfing and spinning around. And, um, but they just really wanna learn how to loop because it's like the most fun thing ever. So first thing you need to, you need to learn how to like control a side surf, get comfortable carving and spinning around because the most, like one of the big important steps for doing a loop is setting up at the top of the pile. And in order to set up at the top of the pile, you have to have the edge control and the like awareness of like how to surf and carve out, um, carve out of the hole and back to the top of the pile. And that's like setting up at the top of the foam pile. So there's five different steps for the loop. There's the setup, the plug, the stand, the throw and the finish. So first I'm gonna talk about the setup. The setup you need to, there's like three different ways to do it. You can either spin and like by spinning in the hole that'll automatically bring you to the top of the foam pile. And what I mean by the top of the foam pile, I mean like every hole has, the trough is the bottom of the hole. And then the top of the foam pile is where like the backmost part of the whitewash that you can sit on without flushing off the wave. So that's what I mean by the top of the foam pile. And so spinning works, or you can do like sit on a hard edge in a side surf and pull on a inlet wave in Nottingham. I don't know if you guys have seen videos of that freestyle feature, um, but I've actually never really used that technique ever, but it's definitely used to inlet wave in Nottingham. So the one I'm talk gonna talk about today 
is carving out of the hole and back in the hole. So every single hole you're going to be working in is going to have like a different way of setting up that you're going to need to do. So some holes are better for the hard edge and pull with your paddle, like, like in Nottingham. Some are better for spinning. And then most of them I have found are good with like carving out of the hole and back in. So I have a setting up for loops video. I'm going to try it and we'll see if it works. Hopefully it does. Let's see. Okay. We're going to do this screen share. Okay, hopefully this works. Let me know in the chat box if chat box if it doesn't. I'm sorry if it doesn't. But here we go. Getting to the top of the foam pile. Okay. So you're going to surf out to the edge of the wave, look back up at the top of the wave, and then plug for your trick. So that was a space Godzilla, not a loop, but same idea. Surf out to the edge of the wave or the hole, and back up at the top of the hole, plug, and throw your trick. And then I'm going to slow it down really quick. So it's carving and surfing, similar things. And then you're going to look at the top of the hole. Right where my paddle is, is about, that's about the edge of where you can be where my boat was. There we go. So I'm carving out and I want to use my eyes. I'm going to look at the top of the hole to get to carve back to the top of the hole and then slide down to the bottom of it. Hmm. Did you guys, were you guys able to see that video? Yes, but fuzzy. Okay, well, it's better than nothing, I guess. <laughs> okay. Cool. If you guys have questions, keep putting them in the chat box, please, because I'll answer them at the end of this. Okay, so that's how you set up for the loop. So second, second step is the plug. So I actually think the plug of the loop is probably the most important part of the loop because modern playboats these days, if you have like a rock star or a jed, um, basically if you plug correctly, your boat's gonna just shoot out of the water. They're kind of like, it's kind of like holding on a bar of soap and just like squeezing it. It just doesn't like shoot out. So if you get the right plug and then like do steps three and four marginally well, you'll still probably get a good loop. So once you're at the top of the foam pile, you're going to lean forward slightly, just slightly because your boat is automatically going to slide down the top of the foam pile towards the trough of the wave because that's the way the water is moving in the hole. The hole is moving, the whitewash is moving back upstream. So it's going to slide your boat forward anyways. So you, and you don't want to lean forward too much because that will prevent you from getting air with your loop, which is what I'll talk about in a bit. So as you're plugging, as you're leaning forward, you're gonna plant a stabilization stroke in the water. You're always gonna have one paddle blade in the water as you're plugging. So this will help you keep your chest and your boat square forward. You wanna plug completely perpendicular to the green water. So the green water is the water that's coming into the hole and the, the um, White water is what's like going back upstream. And so you want to plug completely perpendicular to the green water, just facing square forward. And that stabilization stroke is going to keep you facing forward and not like sliding around on edge or anything like that. And as you plant your stabilization stroke, you're going to think chest up, head up as you do that. That's why you don't want to lean forward too much because you want to have good posture as you're plugging. So your stabilization stroke and stomping your feet. This is how you actually plug. You're not plugging by like lean forward and just like smashing in the water. You're plugging by stomping your feet in the water as hard as you can. Um, and so the way I do that is just like planting my stroke and slamming my heels and my toes. And I want to think about like standing, then standing up on those feet. So you want to plug your bow into the right where the green water meets the white water that's coming back up. Some holes are different. Some holes you're going to want to plant, like plug farther into the green water, a little farther upstream. And some holes you're going to want to plug a little bit farther downstream, just depending on the hole 
If it's pretty shallow, you're going to want to plug farther downstream. If it's really deep and you plug farther upstream, you're going to get a bigger loop, but it's a little harder to do that. Okay, I'm going to try. Um, okay, I don't have a video yet. Yeah, so that's your plug. Your plug, you have your stabilization stroke and you have stomping your feet. And then step three, you're going to stand up. So I think, like to think head up, chest up, stand up, arms up. So that's the most important thing when you stand is your head up. You want to keep your chin up, you want to look up. And then secondly, your chest up. And then thirdly, you want to think about standing up and fourth, your arms up. If you are kind of unbalanced and need to keep your stabilization stroke in the water while you loop and kind of like loop around your stroke, instead of lifting your arms, you always like see photos and videos of people like lifting their arms and then throwing their loop with their whole body. You can't get your arms out of the water because you feel unstable, that's fine. You probably won't go quite as big, but I often loop without taking my arms out of the water. If you, but if you get your chest and your head up, then you can still get quite a big bit of air without keeping getting, getting your arms out of the water. So don't focus on that quite. The third step, so we have, we have um, the setup, we have the plug, we have the stand up, and then we have the throw. The throw is the fourth step. You're just gonna, you're up and you're gonna throw all your weight forward and that's it. Throw all your weight forward, make sure you go straight forward, looking straight down at your cockpit. And then the finish, you're going to open back up like this, throw your weight back and you're going to perform a loop stroke. So the loop stroke is when you take your paddle completely, um, just like in good posture, right back like this with both paddle blades. Some people teach to bring like one paddle blade back, but I don't like that because you have a tendency to like go back with your like, um, your rolling blade, the one that you're like best de dominant to roll on, and then like land on that side and land your loop sideways. So the goal of the loop is to land like straight forward. So if you use both paddle blades back, you'll land flat with your um, feet landing forward, stomp your feet down in a perfect finish. Okay, so I'm gonna try another video. I hope it works, I'm sorry. Um, We'll see. This one is going to show, let's see. Da, 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 da. Show how to loop. Show the screen. Hello. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so you start at the top of the foam pile. There's my stroke with my right paddle blade. I lean forward slightly. And then my chin is up. My chest is up. I wait for my boat to be vertical. And then I throw. And then I open back up with both my paddle blades back at the same time and slamming my feet back down into the water. Cool, hopefully that one worked a little better than the first one. Okay, and then I have another video to demonstrate why you need to bring both paddle blades back. This is a flat water loop. So I know some of you guys mentioned in the chat box that you're learning how to flat water loop um, or like you're keen on learning how to flat water loop. So hopefully this will help you a little bit with that. Let's see if I can screen share this. Screen. There we go. My internet connection is not good. Hmm. Hopefully this works. There we go, head up, chest up, stand up, the throw, and then back. See, I only did one paddle blade for that loop stroke. I should have used both. 
This is an example of my friend David Silk doing a good flat water loop. This is blurry on my screen too, so it's definitely going to be blurry on yours. Able to get a good straight flat water loop that way. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do. If you want to practice this with me, what I like to do is like visualize the metrics. So before I um, competed at World Championships in 2017, I spent half an hour every morning and half an hour every evening visualizing my ride. And I think that was more valuable than like actually practicing my ride, honestly, because it didn't make me so tired. Um, so we're going to just practice visualizing all five steps of the loop since we can't actually go outside and practice them right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to pretend we have the setup, plug, the stand, the throw, and the finish. So to set up, pretend you're surfing a wave, then you're going to put in a rudder to get out to the side of the wave. Now you're on the side of the wave of the hole, and then you're going to look back at the top of the hole, plan to draw a stroke, and get yourself back to the top of the hole. And then so now you're at the top of the hole, you're set up. And so you're going to lean forward slightly to start sliding down the hole, just slightly. You're going to plant your stabilization stroke. I plant it with my right paddle blade because I'm right-handed, but you can do it with ever, whichever one you're comfortable with. It. Plant my stabilization stroke. I'm going to stomp my feet, look up, stand up, throw forward, throw back. So that's those are the steps for like the loop itself. Set up a side, stomp up, throw back. And same thing for if you want to do a back loop, but the opposite direction. It's complicated. I won't get into that now. <laughs> back loops are hard for me. Okay, so that's how to loop. Um, I think some of you said you know how to loop, but you're a little inconsistent on it. So I'm also going to talk about how to go bigger on your loops. So going big on your loops, a lot of it is about timing. So right after you plug, before you throw, you want to make sure your boat is vertical behind your back before you throw. Because if you throw too early, before your boat's vertical and like starting to pop out of the water, you will just like fall on your face or go sideways or like you'll lose your edge control. So you have to make sure you'll feel it. Like once you plug, you'll feel your boat come up behind your head and you'll feel it behind your head and then you'll know like, okay, stand up and throw. Um, and the thing with timing is it's different in every single feature. So every hole or wave, like whatever type of feature you're working on has a different timing in a different way of that you need to plug your bow for the loop. So you kind of have to relearn for every feature, unfortunately. So like I started looping at Brennan's wave in Missoula when I was like 16. And by the time I was like 17, eight, I think I was 18. I was super confident with it, could get it every time. And then I went down to Reno and started trying loops in their whitewater park and I couldn't get them at all. I had no idea what to do. And I had to like completely relearn the trick and learn how to do it in different features. Um, so just be aware of that you, you just have to work it out and fall on your face a bunch. I did, it's, it's kind of fun falling on your face actually. I kind of enjoy it. Good beat down practice, good roll practice. Um, okay, so the next thing for going bigger on your loops the harder you stomp your feet during the plug, the more air you're going to get. This is because the modern playbooks are filled with so much volume, like around your knees and around your body. And so if you can get the, like most of the boat underwater when you're plugging, then all of that volume is then going to pop back out of the water and try and just release itself from the water. And um, the modern playboats do an awesome job of doing that. Um, yeah, so if the harder you stomp your feet when you plug, the more air you're going to get. Um, and then the next thing, keeping, make sure to keep good posture and keep your chest and chin up as you plug. So my friend when I was 16, Hannah, she taught me how to loop. She told me, so like Brennan's Wave, where I paddle in Missoula, there's a, a bridge, Higgins Bridge is right in front of the wave. She told me to pretend Ryan Gosling was on the bridge and to like look at him as I'm looping and like jump towards him. Um, as a 16 year old, it, pretty, it worked pretty well. 
So something like that might help. I don't know. Pretend Ryan Gosling's there, Brad Pitt, whoever, whoever you're into. Um, and then let's see. Have you guys? I don't know if you guys use the thrusters under your spray skirt. Spray skirt. They look pretty silly, but it actually it actually works. So what the thruster does is it it adds a little bit of volume to your boat. But like, honestly, boats now are like 60 gallons. You don't need that much extra volume. What it does is it prevents your spray skirt from imploding, not imploding all the way. Like you're probably not, your spray skirt's probably not gonna pop. But like, if your spray skirt implodes even like a little bit, it significantly reduces your volume in your boat. And it's just kind of annoying. You can feel the water on your legs. Um, so it's just, the thrusters actually help and like, if you or like if you can't get a thruster like a beach ball sitting just in between your legs under your spray skirt could really help. Um, yeah okay and so then if you are a little bit more advanced with your loop. Um, you're going to use what I call a pry stroke so if you're just starting out of the loop. Don't listen to this yet or maybe listen. But don't use this yet. Just keep doing what you're doing with starting square forward and stuff. But if you're a little more advanced, you've been looping for like a year or two, you kind of know what you're doing. This is a good technique for going a little bigger on loops. It's also a good technique for getting loops in shallower holes. So a pry stroke is kind of a hybrid between a stabilization stroke and a re reverse sweep stroke. So in this type of loop, you're going to, instead of like starting facing square forward and plugging square forward, you're going to plug from a little bit of a side surf, not totally side surf, but maybe like 45 degrees to the left or right of facing forward. And then you're going to plant a stroke, kind of like the stabilization stroke or like a bow stall stroke. And you're going to slice your bow into the water and then stand and throw your loop. So I do this on like more um, faster features, kind of like um, like when I'm looping on waves instead of holes, like in places where the hole's not super steep. And I also do it on shallower features where I need to plug behind the point where the green water and the white water meet so that I don't mess up my boat on rocks. So I have a video of this. Hopefully the screen sharing works again. We'll see. Okay, so while I'm showing you this video, I want you to take a look at what my right paddle blade is doing and the angle of my boat right before I plug. Hopefully you can see it. Hopefully it works. There we go. So this is a wave, not a hole. It's like a really difficult place to loop. So I've angled my boat a little left. And then I use a pry stroke to help plug. Let's see, and this is kind of shaky on my screen too. So sorry. There we go. Yeah. So that's um. Just another technique for looping. It's a little bit trickier, but you can definitely go bigger with it. And you can also practice the prize stroke on flat water. It's kind of similar to a bow stall stroke, the um, third stroke of the bow stall. Um, no, the fourth stroke of the bow stall. Um, and then lastly, with looping, keep your core tight a lot. So. The exercises I do to like um, train for throwing loops are leg lifts. I do leg lifts all the time because that's like the same feeling as when you're finishing the loop. You're going to like slam your feet down and open your body up. And when you're doing leg lifts, you're like crunching your body together and then opening up, crunching together, opening up. Same thing. And then um, the people I watch. So if you are interested in watching people who go big on loops, and learning from them. I am always YouTubing Robinson Shaw. She's the British world champion, junior world champion. She throws massive loops. Tom Dole 
He's a French paddler and he is also a world champion in Hunter Kadich. Hunter Kadich is from the US. Um, so those three, I think they are the best to watch for learning how to loop and like go big on loops. And um, yeah, so lastly, before I wrap this up, you're gonna, when you're learning how to loop, you're gonna fall on your face a lot, like a lot. I think I fell on my face like a million times before I got it. And sometimes it hurts, but it's like not bad pain. You just get pretty sore, but just know that that's very normal. It is very normal to eat shit a lot when you're learning how to loop. You just have to like keep doing it and then it becomes fun once you get your first one. And then once you get your first like head dry one, it's amazing. And then once you get your first clean loop, it's even better. Um, so since I can't like coach you guys in person and I can't like actually see you guys looping and tell you what you need to improve on because that's like the easiest way to learn how to loop is to like have a coach there and tell you like, oh, you forgot your stabilization stroke that time. Oh, you need to keep your chin up. Like, oh, you need to throw a little sooner. Um, if you have, if you guys want to send me video clips of your loops and you're like, whether they're flat water loop attempts or like in a hole, you can do so. Just add me on Facebook and send me your clips and then I'll reply with advice if that works for you. Um, I've done that with a couple people before and it helps a little bit, but um, we'll, we'll see. So anyways, I think that's everything I had. Let me see. Yeah, let's go to some questions. All right. That was awesome, um, Brooke. And if all goes well in the world, um, Brooke will be out in California with us for a few months before she starts grad school. And then hopefully over the next couple of years, um, occasionally while she's in grad school. So um, yeah, so keep an eye on our website because, you know, if travel restrictions lift and we can go out and play this summer, um, We'll definitely be hosting some of Brooke's workshops on the South Fork Americans. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, um, so the first person I'm going to call on today is dun, 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 Cindy. Cindy, you have a question. Hello, Cindy. Oops, sorry, my fault. <laughs> it's a technology, it's a technology day today. Hey. Can you hear me? Hi. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just like, you said to look at the top of the hole when you're plugging. Um, and I get the chin up, chest up thing. That makes a lot of sense. Um, my husband always yells at me to look upstream, but I guess is the point of that just to open up like you're saying or? Yeah. Um, so I don't mean to look at the top of the hole when you're plugging. I mean, when you're setting up. So oh. just, just when you're trying to get to the top of the pile. Okay. Yeah. yeah Look where you're going. When you're plugging, you, um, he was right, look upstream. So I look at the bridge where I pretend Brian Gosling is. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So upstream is correct, yeah. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Cindy. Good question. All right, next up, we have Heather. Heather, you're up. Hey, Brooke. Thanks again. Hey, uh, you kind of already answered this question. I just wanted to know. Um, if, uh, if it always has to be an aggressive stomp with your feet or if some features a more gentle approach is, would work, but it sounds yeah, like really the you stomp the bigger you go. No, really good question. If the, so I find if it's a flatter hole or like a wavy hole, you have to stomp really, really hard. If it's mm. a really small hole, like, um, I'm trying to think of an example. I don't know if you would know any of these. Um, cause you, but, um, like the hole at NOC, like Nantahala Outdoor Center, that one's really steep. It's actually better to plug a little less aggressively because the water is so aggressively coming in. If you plug too aggressively, you might just like get swallowed up. Um, and then if it's a shallow hole, you don't want to plug too aggressively cause you'll break your bone in your feet. But yeah, you just right. have to like work it out for whichever hole you're in and eat shit a couple times and you'll figure it out. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Right on. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is Marie. Can you hear me? Yeah, yep, we got gotcha. you. 
I was just wondering how you know if you're going to smash your head on the rock making the hole when you loop. That's what I'm afraid of. You're afraid you're smashing your head? Yeah. Uh, so I have been looping for 10 years and I've never hit my head doing it. Um, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. Like it, it could happen. I don't want to tell you you're not going to get hurt and then you get hurt. But um, it's never happened to me. Basically, if a hole is deep enough for you to plug your bow into without smashing your feet or your boat, then you're probably not going to hit your head. And most of the times when you flip, like you're going to flip upstream, you're going to window shade. If you're not hitting your head while window shading, you're probably not going to hit your head while looping. Um, I just, I, ha I never have. And I haven't seen it happen here either, actually. So I think you'll be okay, but I understand that fear. So if there's a wave where I can hit the rock with my boat, I should not loop there? Not necessarily. Um, okay. I still would, but it, it's all personal preference. Like, are, are you seeing, are other people looping at that wave? Uh, there is a girl I paddle with who's really awesome and she loops there, but I have trouble even staying on the wave, honestly. Um, it's called yeah, Slipping Beauty in New Mexico. And so, oh, cool. I don't know if I want to loop there because it's not that deep. But I think mm. it'd be the place to loop around my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I'd say give it a go a couple times. If you are hitting your feet too much, maybe back off and like, or it might just be like you need to develop a little more control like spinning in the wave first and confidence with that work your way up slowly and then you'll gain confidence so you can plug for loops without being nervous um but yeah I, I don't know without seeing the feature okay yeah well good question marie um nina has a question for you I'm good. Okay, now you're on. Oh, come on. It's no check question. day. No question. All right, let's start again. No question. I'm good. No oh. Oh, sorry. I thought you had a question. Yeah, you did. No, just chattering. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask no a question. question for you. Um, in the oh, chat, it says, yeah. I, I want to ask you. Oh, what kind of earplugs? Oh, my gosh. I have the worst ear problems. I have, if I, oh, my gosh, from kayaking for so many years, if I go swimming without earplugs, just swimming and like, any sort of water, I get an ear infection that evening. So I have um, earplugs that I, I went to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and they like molded to my ears. And I have like those specific ones that are like, you'd like twist in and they're like just for my ears. And they're actually not that expensive. I think it was like $150. Um, but yeah, those are the ones I have, like the real deal. Yeah, dude, are they comfy? Yeah, I don't notice when I have them in. Um, I think they're perfect and I've never lost, I've had them for like, I think I've had them for like 10 years, long enough so that I was still on my parents' house when I got them. So I didn't have to pay for them. So I think I've had them since I was like 18. Um, but yeah, they were like 150 bucks and I've had them for like 10 years and they're really comfortable, yeah. Can you hear? Yes. I wear them creaking and Styling. But you have to like make an appointment and go see them and then tell them what you need. Like mine have a shock absorber type thing in them. So like if I get hit in the ear, they'll like absorb shock so that I don't lose, I don't like blow my eardrum. And they have like a little hole so I can hear a little better. So they, they have different options that you can get. And they're pink. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with you on the custom earplugs, it was, and um, mine are purple, <laughs> but yeah, best, 
best investment I could have made. Um, but yeah, get them vented, get little strings put on them. Um, but yeah, mm. super comfortable. They actually keep the water out and um, it's your ears, man. <laughs> Take care of them. All right, um, let's see, we got another question here. Okay, Cindy, back to you. Hey, so I can sort of bow stall, sort of kinda, and I eventually mm -hmm. would like a solid bow stall and start working on flat water looping. Um, I know this is probably just like practice my butt off, uh, but do you have any tips for stabilizing a longer bow stall to work towards the flat water loop? Yeah, for sure. So the a really important thing is as soon as you're in the bow stall, you need to slide your arms and your paddle out in front of you, like as far out as you can get, because you want it's like you want your body, like your boat, and your two hands to act like a tripod. So you want them as far out as possible because a wide tripod is more stable than a narrow tripod. So it's far out in front of you. And then just like you, what I try to do is I like use my wrists to like feather my paddle blade back to the surface. Cause sometimes you can like push your paddle down too much and then you just like fall face forward. So if you like use your wrists to feather, feather it back up so you can keep your paddle on the surface kind of and then use each paddle blade in turn to keep yourself stable. And then just really focusing on keeping your core tight the whole time. Like if I am in a bow stall for longer than 60 seconds, I'll be so sore the next day just because I have my core tight the whole time. Um, but yeah, the most important thing is that tripod, keeping your arms out pretty far in front of you to keep stable. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know how that happened. <sighs> Um, <laughs> uh, cool. All right, Nina, you're back on the hot seat. Oh no, what did I do with this video? <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the Golden Gate? Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, it's a virtual background, though. It doesn't work very well. Um, and so then, okay, so then if you're stabilized in your bow stall and you're, like, bouncing, at what point then do you start, like, throwing your arms for your flat water loop? Let's watch the flat water loop video again if the screen sharing works. <laughs> we will see. Hopefully it does. Okay. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, no, it's going too fast. Let's share screen. Here we go. I'll try and narrate it as it goes. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be silly. Okay. So you're in your bounce stall. You're getting a couple bounces. There we go, throw. I'm gonna slow it down at some point. And then I can talk about this a little more. Okay, you're in your bounce stall. So to bounce, you're using your paddle pushing on your paddle up and down and sliding your feet up and down in the water, alternatively standing up and then leaning back forward. So you pull and then throw. So you're gonna throw for your loop. Let's go back. You throw for your loop when your boat, you want your boat vertical and as much of it under the water as possible. You want as much volume of your boat underwater before you throw so that more the so more boat will pop back out of the water so my see how my chin is up my chest is up my arms are up oh my internet connection is unstable hopefully you're seeing this <laughs> we can hear you we just can't see the video no we can see you it see the video? Oh. we can see, see it a picture oh come okay. on we got it yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, hopefully you're getting something out of this anyways. <laughs> there you go. So like, basically you're going to stand up as soon as you're like the most volume of your boat is underwater as possible. You're standing up and then as your boat starts to pop back out of the water, that's when you throw forward for the loop. Does that help? I hope that helps. I think so. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. 
please send me video clips so I have something to do because I'm unemployed right now. <laughs> oh, and we'll we'll um we'll start out getting these video clips uploaded to YouTube, and so you guys can watch those, and we'll include those in the follow up links, and we'll just you know figure it out for you. Okay, Zach has a question. Hello, Zach. Hello, Zach. No microphone. Okay, Zach has no microphone, so. Oh, I can read it. <laughs> what, um, what are some other suggestions for exercises to help build strength for loops besides leg lifts? Okay, leg lifts are great. Supermans, when you're on your belly, lifting your arms and your legs. I'm gonna do it this time. It's silly. One more time. Here we go. This lifting like this. That's really good for um. Uh, what is that? That gets the muscles in between your shoulder blades so that your shoulders don't dislocate while you're working the loop, which is ideal. We want to keep our shoulders healthy and happy. So Supermans are great, leg lifts, um, any core exercise, honestly, like push-ups, pull-ups. You want to develop those lat muscles pretty well. That would be pull-ups because your um, like stabilization strokes depend on that. Any core exercise like on a ball or balancing exercise so you can keep your core stable. Um, yeah, I, I try to do leg lifts, sit-ups, push-ups, and pull-ups. I think those are the most and the, um, the supermans, just for keeping your stuff healthy. Yeah. Nice. Because that's Question. what we have time to do right now, our exercises at home. <laughs> you really do. Cool. Um, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. That was a good question. <laughs> Awesome. All right, last call on questions. If anyone else has anything else to ask, ask. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so clearly, this is a tech and English issue today. <laughs> All right. Um, sweet. Um, so yeah, Brooke, if you have any closing remarks for today, um. Just send me your videos and have fun flopping on your face. Oh, one time, this is actually pretty funny. One time I was learning how to make nasty, which is the 180 degree spin into the loop. I was learning how to do it in um, the Buena Vista Whitewater Park in Colorado in like end of April, which is, it's like really cold there then. And so the water was just like, I was, I didn't know how to make nasty. And I was just like smashing my face in the green water so hard, so many times in a row that I got a black eye. And so, just because it was like, so cold and painful. So don't do that, that was dumb. Um, but otherwise you should be fine falling on your face, it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, good, any video clips. <laughs> awesome, yeah, I'm <laughs> definitely um, not a teenager or in my early 20s, so I'm gonna, probably try not to give myself a black eye or trying to do that. <laughs> For being here and putting up with our technical difficulties. Um, I hope that you all still got a lot out of that. I know that I did. Um, I understand why I've done a lot of face surfing and <laughs> not so much leaving the, the, um, the water but um yeah tune in again we have so much more stuff coming up we are literally running these webinars three or four days a week at least till mid-june and then we'll see what happens with this whole you know virus thing that we're dealing with um anything else we got going on we got darcy's coming back we got some sea kayaking stuff if you guys are interested in that we have marianne setter tuning in from norway she's going to talk about the booth we got i mean we got a family series coming up emily jackson is joining us uh, marianne and natalie anderson will be back 
and they're going to talk about how to balance family life and friends and making sure you can still get on on the water even if you have kids and work and all that jazz but um thanks again thank you so much brooke and i am so utterly excited that you are going to be here in california hopefully not too far away and uh, we can go plan yeah fingers crossed and i'm also really excited about getting some uh freestyle workshops on our on our calendar for the summer again <laughs> we'll yeah, keep doing that sure. but yeah stay tuned get on the website and if you guys are get a wild hair come on out to cali uh the south fork american is awesome keeps the waves keeps the holes and brick will be here so anyways thanks again and we'll get this uploaded and back to you so you can listen to it and i probably will try to also include an audio file as well um and we'll try to get those other links to you and send your videos to brooke so thanks again brooke and we will see you all again next time and then again hang out for one second we're gonna get a little uh a little screen up with all of brooke's information and so you can find her on facebook instagram and you can send her your videos all right and there we go thanks folks Hey everybody, my name is Brooke Hess and last week I did a webinar on how to loop and I had a little bit of technical difficulties with the videos playing in it so I'm just going to talk about that again and record this and send it to you so hopefully this works this time. Um, but anyway, so here we go. A loop is a front flip in a kayak and basically it's the most fun thing to do ever. So <laughs> what it is, it's it's the prerequisite for most freestyle kayaking tricks. Like if you want to learn how to space Godzilla, McNasty, Phonics Monkey, a space Godzilla is a loop with a 90 degree twist in it. A McNasty is a 180 degree spin into a loop. A Phonics Monkey is a cross bow pirouette into a loop. A macho move is a down river wave wheel into a loop. Um, a Hail Mary, if you want to do a loop off of a waterfall, which is something I have never wanted to do in my life and never want to do in my life because that sounds scary. But if you want to do that, you need to know how to loop first. So um, if you are watching this, go ahead right now, pause this video and watch the loops video that is on YouTube that we also sent to you. That'll show you different kinds of loops, some creek boat loops, some flat water loops, all that stuff. And now I'm gonna step into how to loop. So some prerequisites for looping. First, you need to be able to surf and carve around on waves. You also, this is a prerequisite I have for teaching the loop. I think it's easier if you know how to spin both directions on a wave or in a hole first. This is basically because like, if you have more control in the hole and more body awareness of what to do in the hole first, which includes being able to spin both directions, then you'll be able to learn the loop faster and your progression will be quicker and easier and it won't hurt as bad when you fall on your face a bunch of times. Um, I, yeah, I just think it's really important to be able to spin both ways before you learn how to loop. Um, surfing and carving around on the wave, the reason that's important is because the first step of the loop is setting up. So setting up for the loop, you want to be set up your boat at the top of the foam pile on the hole. So here we go. There's five steps for the loop. The five steps are the setup, number one, the plug, the stand, the throw, and the finish. So first we're going to talk about the setup. So setting up, there's ways to set up. The first way, you can spin to the top of the hole. If you do a spin, a lot of times that will end up you up at the top of the hole. That doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. Second way, you can do a hard edge in a side surf. You can pull a hard downstream edge like really edge towards the downstream side of the hole while pointing, putting in a draw stroke, a downstream draw stroke, and that'll pull you out of the hole as you're like, you'll be parallel to the hole because you'll be side surfing, pull you out of it in a side surf, and then you turn back to a front surf and then throw your loop. That trick is, that, that method is easier in holes such as like 
Inlet Gate in Nottingham, England in the UK. That's where you need to do that. But um, I haven't used it too much, honestly, myself. The method I usually use is the carving out and back in method. This method works in most of the features I've surfed in my life, which is quite a few. Um, so this one, if you click on the video we sent you, the video, what's it called? Setting up for loops video. This is a good time to click on that one and watch that one. So what you're gonna wanna do is carve to the side of the wave, look back up at the top of the hole. You like, you always look because wherever your head is going is where your boat's gonna follow. So you look back up at the top of the hole, use a draw stroke to draw your boat back up to the top of the foam pile. So when I say top of the foam pile, I mean the last possible place that you can position your boat while in a front surf on the foam pile of the hole without flushing off the back of the hole or the wave, whatever feature you're in, that's the top of it. So carving to the top of the wave or the top of the hole is important, not just for loops, but for every single freestyle trick. If you wanna throw a blunt on a big wave, you have to carve to the top of the, hole, the wave first, and then you throw the blunt as you're, as you're going back down the wave, as your boat starts sliding back down the wave. Same with an air screw, same with McNasty's, you still have to get to the top of the wave, back blunts, back Pan Ams, loops, space guzzles, even spins. Spins are much easier if you carve to the top of the wave first and then spin as your boat goes down the face of the wave. So the reason your boat goes down the face of the wave once you're at the top of the foam pile is because the foam pile is moving back down the face of the wave. So the foam pile is literally pushing your boat back down the face of the wave and your boat naturally wants to sit in a front surf in the trough of the wave, in the bottom of the wave. The trough is the bottom of the wave. So um, yeah, so basically you wanna to get to the top of the wave and then gravity and the foam pile naturally pull you down to the, trough, to the trough of the wave. Okay, so that's the first step is the setup. Second step, plug. So the plug is when you literally plug your bow of your kayak into the spot where the green water, which is the water that's coming in to the hole, and the white water, which is the water that's backing up the hole, meet. So that's the spot where you want to plug your bow. So as you're coming down the face of the wave from your setup, you're going to lean forward slightly, just slightly, not all the way, because if you're leaning forward too much, you're not going to get any air or amplitude on your trick. So you're leaning forward slightly and you're going to plant a stabilization stroke in the water before you plug. The reason you plant the stabilization stroke is to keep your boat square facing forward. You always want to be square facing forward, exactly forward, and perpendicular to the whole of the wave. Because if you plant your stabilization stroke, then you can keep your boat square as you're plugging your bow. And it just keeps you a little more stable. If you don't have that and you plug like this, there's a high chance that your bow will slip off to the side and you're, you'll window shade. Um, Second thing, as you plug, you're leaning forward slightly, not a lot. You want to stomp your feet. You don't want to think about leaning forward to plug your bow. You want to think about stomping your feet, your heels, and your toes into the green water really hard. What this does is it helps you stand. So as you stomp your feet, your bow goes down, but your body goes up. And so that essentially makes you stand, which is step three of the loop. Step three of the loop is the stand. So you have your plug down and then you stand. So what I like to think with this, with the stand is head up, chest up, stand up, and then arms up. The least important one of these is arms up. If you have your head, chest, and you're standing up, you will get a lot of pop on your loop. If you, if you then add in your arms, you'll get a huge loop. So one thing that I do that helps me, my friend Hannah taught me how to loop, and the thing she told me is like, I looped, I learned how to loop on Brennan's Wave in Missoula, Montana. And we have the Higgins Bridge right in front of Brennan's Wave. And so she told me to pretend Ryan Reynolds, or no, Ryan Gosling, I guess you know that one that works, is on the bridge in front of me. And so I plug and then I stand up and I reach towards him as I'm looping. That helps me bring my, think about like bringing my arms up and keeping my chin and my head up as I'm doing it. So as I plug, I keep my chin and my chest up and then I stand up and then 
Step four is throw. So all this is, I'm gonna throw my body and my arm and my paddle straight forward, straight down towards my cockpit ring, head included. I'm gonna look towards my cockpit ring, just throw forward. That's it, step four. Step five is the finish. I'm gonna open back up all the way to the stern of my kayak. So this, with this one, I'm gonna use a loop stroke. So what a loop stroke is, is I take both my paddle blades, throw them back like this simultaneously, equal on both sides. Some people teach to do a loop stroke with one paddle blade. I disagree with this. I think that has a tendency to have people do that with their dominant paddle blade. And if they're used to rolling on that side, they'll fall into a roll instead of doing this straight. And they'll tend to land their loops a little sideways rather than straight forward, which is the goal. So loop stroke, paddle blades back. And what you wanna do is essentially open your body like this. You wanna throw your feet down, back down, and your body all the way open. So that's my five steps. You're gonna set up, plug, stand, throw, and finish. So now go ahead and click on the slow down looping steps video that I prepared for you. And when you're done with that one, go ahead and click on the flat water looping video. So the flat water looping video will really help you see how important the loop stroke is rather than just kind of like rolling up. It's important to use both paddle blades rather than just one. And so once you're done with watching those videos, <laughs> um, just like one thing that has helped me learn tricks a little faster is visualizing them. So if you just like stand up like this and visualize yourself setting up. So I'm gonna set up, so I'm gonna surf out to the side of the wave and then look back at the top of the hole or the wave and pull myself up to it and now I'm at the top of the hole. I'm gonna lean forward slightly as I slide down the wave and then I'm going to stomp, stand, throw, and finish. So your plug with my stabilization stroke, stomp is the same thing as plug, stomp and then stand, throw, finish. And that's really helped to re fail to remember all those steps. Okay, now, if you already know how to loop and you just wanna know how to go bigger on your loops, here's some tips for those. So going big on your loops, one thing that really helps is timing. Timing is super important if you can have the right timing. So when you're plugging for your loop, you wanna make sure that you wait until your boat is totally vertical and you can kind of feel it come up behind your, behind your back and behind your head and you're standing all the way before you throw. If you throw a little too early, you might still get a loop, but you won't get as much air. If you stand the right amount and like stand as long as you can before throwing, then you'll get the most air possible. If you stand too long, you'll do a sweet flying squirrel, which is where you like land the loop like this on your face. It, they're actually really fun too. So highly recommend that as well, but you won't get a loop. Um, second thing for going bigger, the harder you stomp your feet in the plug, the more air you will get. So the whole idea is like, you wanna get the most volume of your boat underwater because then that allows the most volume of your boat to pop back out of the water and get air. And so the modern freestyle boats these days, like the Rockstar 4.0, any of the older Rockstar models, the Jackson Star, the Jed, um, the Dagger Jitsu, all of them are designed to, when they're plugged, then just like they fly out of the water. It's kind of like holding a bar of soap and squeezing it and the bar of soap goes, just, just goes flying. That's kind of how it feels like with these boats. They're meant to loop. So the harder you stomp your feet, then, and the more volume of your boat you get underwater, then the more volume is gonna pop out and the bigger you'll go. Another thing, while you're plugging, make sure to keep your chest and chin in the air. This will really help emphasize the stand part of the loop. And so if you cheek, have your um, chest and your chin in the air as you're plugging, then you'll be able to stand much taller and throw and throw bigger. Another thing, the thrusters under your spray skirt, I know they look really funny. It's just like this big bulbous thing underneath your spray skirt. It actually really helps. So if you don't have a thruster, maybe find a beach ball or something. The reason is this, this adds a little more volume to, to your playboat, 
but it also prevents your spray skirt from imploding a little bit when you're throwing your loop. So when you throw your loop without one, your spray skirt's gonna implode a little bit. It probably won't like pop all the way, but it will implode a little bit and that loses volume and it just loses some of the pop that you get with your loop. Another thing, like if you get the Jackson thruster, it comes with the happy seat underneath it, which goes underneath your legs and holds your knees up. That just, I find that really helps with a lot of control. So I really recommend getting a thruster and using that. Okay, another thing with looping, throwing big loops, if you already have your loop, listen to this, if you don't have your loop yet, disregard this. If you have your loop and you're getting them consistently from a square forward plug, another way of going big is to plug with a pry stroke. So a pry stroke is kind of a hybrid between a stabilization stroke and a reverse sweep stroke. So you still use your dominant paddle blade to do this. The way I do this is I plug instead of from a straight forward surf, I have my boat angled a little bit like 45 degrees to, usually I do it to the left because I use a right pry stroke to get my boat in. And then I plug with a little bit of like a slicey movement. So kind of like a, the first half of a cartwheel, I slice my bow in as I use a pry stroke to get my bow underneath. And that really helps me get a little more momentum with my plug and thus gets my stomp a little harder and then allows me to get a little more air. This is really helpful on like faster, flatter features, kind of like wavy holes rather than like steep holes. It won't work on like steep holes, kind of like, like an NOC, that's a really steep hole. This is not a good technique for this, but it's a really good technique on like push button on the Ottawa or Brennan's Wave in Missoula, kind of like wavy holes that are kind of tricky to plug for loops. This is also a really good technique in shallow holes because in shallow holes, you want to plug behind where the foam and the green water meet. You want to plug a little farther in the foam and you want to plug lightly. So this, it's just a way to get a little more control with your plug. You can use the pry stroke to plug a little farther back and then you won't hit rocks, hopefully. So now you can watch the video I sent you on pry strokes and my last tip for going big is to keep a tight core. The way I keep a tight core is just like, I focus on, I mean, I focus on keeping my tight core. And the, the best exercise I've found for loops is a leg lift. Leg lifts really emphasize working the same muscle groups that you use to open up the loop at the end, because you're like lifting your legs, opening back up, lifting your legs, opening back up same movement you do when you do the loop stroke. You're like, that's your opening up after the leg lifts. And then um, I have some suggestions for people you can watch to learn loops. Um, Audley Robinson Shaw, if you follow her on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, she goes huge on loops and she really emphasizes the whole body movement. I really watch, like watching her. I like watching Tom Dole because he's a really small human but he's very explosive, so he uses his head quite a bit to lead with the loops. And then Hunter Kadich. Hunter Kadich has like, I don't know how he does it. He goes massive and he really emphasizes using his head first. And he's really good in flat water too. He is really good one to watch for learning flat water loops. Um, yeah, lastly, if you are trying to learn how to loop, do not get discouraged if you are falling on your face a million times. I think it took me like 2,000 tries of falling on my face before I finally got one. Yeah, it takes a lot and you get used to it. <laughs> you get used to eating shit a lot. And it becomes kind of fun. Um, but yeah, if you are trying to learn how to loop and you don't have someone to like tell you what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, don't be afraid to send me your clips. You can send me them on Instagram or Facebook. Find me on Facebook and add me and send me your video clips and I'll try and give you some advice. Yeah, good luck.